In lab 7 we are navigating the file stream. In these sections we will navigate home and system directories and also list files and directories. 7.2 is just giving a more in-depth description of what 7.1 was saying. Also a warning that file and directory names in Linux are case sensitive. In 7.2.1 we need to type the following command to print the working directory. The following command is pwd. So if we type pwd our current working directory which is slash home slash system admin comes up. This is the current directory we are working in. We could also use echo dollar sign home with home being all uppercase and press enter and this will give us the same result. The cd command that also has a path after it changes the directory. If we do cd it'll automatically take us back to the home directory. If we do cd slash, this changes to a slash, and if we print pwd, we can see that we are in the slashed directory. We are not in the home directory. If we wanted to go back home, we could just type cd, and we can see we are back in the home directory. The little squiggly line represents the home directory. So if we see the squiggly line, that means we are currently inside of our home directory. For 7.2.4, we are told that the cd command may be entered with a path to a directory specified as an argument. We can execute the cd followed by a slash home and then we are going to be in the slash home directory. If we wanted to go back to the main home folder we would just do cd and then we are going to be outside of this. If we do print working directory we do slash home slash system admin but if we want to do cd slash home again we can run this and then do pwd and we can see that we are going to be in the slash home directory. When a command starts with a slash, that means we are in the absolute path. Absolute paths are always complete paths from the root directory to a subdirectory or file. If we wanted to go back to the home directory, we would do cd and the squiggly, and we are going to be back in the home directory here. If we print the working directory, we do slash home slash system admin, and then we are told more information about what this character will do or if there are no other characters or forward slash. We're given an example that with the squiggly line bob and if we expand this we have slash home slash bob. This is similar to when we did the slash home up here. Paths that start with a title are considered absolute paths because after the shell expands the title path an absolute path is formed. We could also use the echo command to display some of other examples using the title as part of our path. So if we use echo squiggly squiggly sys admin squiggly mail and nobody and press enter we can see that we have all of these here. So for our system admin I think because there are two squiggly lines here this is why there are two slash home slash system admins directories listed right here and then we have squiggly line root so this is the directory for the root and then we have mail and this slash var and then slash mail is the directory for this and then nobody is in slash non-existent. In 7.2.7 .7, if we do cd squiggly line roots we can see that we have a permission denied and that's because we don't have access to go into the root directory. For 7.2.8 we can try to go into the user bin. We do this by doing cd which is the current directory slash user slash bin and then it's going to take us in the directory for user bin. If we do pwd for print working directory and press enter we can see that our print working directory is currently slash user slash bin. For 7.2.9 we need to use an absolute path to change the slash user directory and display the working directory by issuing the following commands. So we're still going to be in the slash user slash bin but we just want to go up to the slash user. To do this we'll do cd slash user and this is different from what we did up here. This is what we did previously to get into user bin and we're using this to get into user. So instead of having the bin part, we just have the user part. And now we are in the user. If we print the working directory, we can see that we are just in slash user. Now we want to change our directory from slash user to slash user slash share slash doc. So to do this, we're going to do cd. Actually, before we do this, we can do ls. And this will list all of the things that we have. We see that we have a share in here. This is where we want to go. So we can see that there is a folder in here. And let's say that we knew we wanted to go into share after we do ls. Then we will do cd slash share, and then we know that in our share we have doc. 
but before a slash share we need to specify the slash user so now we're in the slash user slash share slash doc going back to here if we did just cd slash user now we're back in the user if we only did cd slash share slash doc we can see that we have a no such file directory because we need the entire address which is including the user because the user is the top part above share so we can go back into the user doc share print the working directory and we are inside of here if we do ls which is what i just did we can see that we have a bunch of files in here we can see that one of these is bash this is another directory however if we wanted to do the, go into here we would have to do slash user slash share slash doc slash bash which would work however this is super long and instead of using absolute path names relative path names would be better in this situation so if i clear this we can see that we're still in the slash user slash share slash doc and we know we have a bash in our doc here so instead of typing it all out we can just do cd bash and this will take us in here so if we want to use relative we don't have any slashes in front. If we want to use absolute, we have slashes in front. If there was no bash in here, the command would have failed. So if we do, um, if we go back a level, if we just do cd dot dot, which actually will go in later, but cd dot dot takes us back another level in our directories. Instead of typing in cd bash, type in something that wasn't there, like this, we can see that we have a no such file directory and it'll ask us again, and even if we mess up, we can still type in something else, and now we're back in bash. 7.2.12 is just demonstrating the dot dot, which takes us back a previous directory. Expanding on this idea of the dot dot, which we will do right now because we need to be in doc. So now we're back in doc. We can actually have a absolute directory after this. So if we do cd dot dot, we can have a slash and then another file name in here. So if we do ls, which lists all of these files, we can look for something that's dict. I couldn't find it in here after doing ls, it's because I'm still in doc. I need to be in share, and in share is where dict is. It's where docs and dict is. So we just have to trust that dict will be in our share directory. And to get here, we will do cd dot dot slash dict. What this is gonna do is change our current directory up one level and then look for the dict directory. We press enter, we can see that we jump in here successfully. 7.3 is about listing files and directories and we will explore how to list files and directories. In 7.3.1, we are told to list the contents of the current directory, we use the ls command. So if we wanted to do this in here, we would just type ls as I've done previously and we can see that the only thing in dict are American English and words. If we have black or white, it'll be a regular file. So this is a, a regular file. Words, which is scion, is a symbolic link file, a file that points to another file. And then green is an executable file or a program. Blue is a directory file. So if we were to go back one level by doing cd dot dot, we can see we are in slash user slash share. If we do ls here, we got a ton of stuff here. We can see that these are all directories since they are all just blue. However, there was another directory we went into previously, which was cd doc. And if we did ls here, we can see we got some stuff here where we have some blue stuff like this, which is directory file. And we also have these, which are scions. So there are four different types of files in any given directory. In 7.3.2, we are told that not all files are displayed by default. Some are hidden files, and to unveil them, we need to do a dash A after the ls command. So we need to have a dash A as the option in the ls command. So I will get out of here by doing cd, and now we're back in the slash home slash system admin. If we do ls dash A here, we can see that we have these dots. And if they are, and if anything starts with a dot, that means it is a hidden file. If we want more information about a specific file, we can do dash l. So we would do ls dash l and then the directory. So we do slash etc slash hosts. By doing this, we get this. And the first character indicates the type of file. This character right here indicates the type of file. 
And then these characters, these next nine characters, represents the permission for the file. This number represents something called the hard link. This is the user. This is the group owner. This is the size of file in bits. This is the last time that the file was edited. And this is the directory of that file. If we want to see more than just the directories, like also see the contents of the subdirectories, we need to use the slash r instead of the slash l. So we can do ls dash, and this is an uppercase r, slash etc slash udev. And after we do this, we have this written out. The dash r option stands for recursive. All the files in the slash etc slash udev directory will be displayed as well as all the files inside of each subdirectory. We need to be careful with the dash r option because some directories are very large and they can print out a lot. We can use file globbing which limits the number of files or, or directories we see. Kind of like a control f, it only displays certain characters that we use to search. So in this example we do ls which lists all of the directories in a certain place, dash d, and what dash d does is it means list directories. It tells us right here that the dash d option prevents files from subdirectories from being displayed. It should always be used with the ls command when we are using file globbing. And then we are going to have a directory which is slash etc. And then after this we are going to have a slash, an s, and then a star. The star character can match zero or more characters in a file name. We need to execute the following command to display only the files that begin with the letter s in the slash etc directory. So we are listing files in the slash etc directory that start with an s. If we press enter here, we can see that we get everything that starts with a s, that has a s inside of it. If we knew the size of our file name, instead of using a specific character like this, we can just type in the size. So we would do ls-d slash etc slash and then use question marks. How many question marks we use will depend on our, our file's name size. So if we have four question marks, like in our example, it's going to display all of the files or directories that have four letters in them. If we press enter here, we can see this. If we wanted to change this to, let's say, six question marks and press enter, we can see that all of these have one, two, three, four, five, six of length. If we wanted something like this, where we would have a specific character be listed when we call for our list inside of our directory, but we want to view multiple starting characters. So let's say we wanted to find files or directories, etc. That started with multiple letters such as A, B, C, and D. Well, we would do ls-d to look in this directory and then the directory slash etc slash and then we can use brackets like this and then they star. And inside of our brackets, we are going to have characters. For this example, we will have A, B, C, and D. If we press enter, we can see that we have all of these different files and directories that only start with A, B, C, and D. If we wanted to include S in here, we could as well by typing in S, and we can see that we have A, B, C, D, and also S. This is the end for this lab seven, which is about navigating the file stream.